<lacht> Hallo, mein Name ist Yad. Willkommen zu diesem YouTube-Video. Ich bin in Begleitung meiner Freund Louis. <lacht> so was? Ali. So now we switch back to English. And French. And French. He's going to be speaking whatever he's able to speak when he's able to speak. My friend is disabled. I'm sorry. Just say sorry. Press F in the comments for him. Hope it will be okay. <laughs> so my friend here doesn't know about a very important story of uh, when I came in France. What happened is, wow, the mic is loud. I came in France something like three and a half years ago. And uh, the first year, as I mentioned in uh, earlier videos, I, I was trying my best to do as much as I could. However, I didn't have no friends and I started working in a restaurant not far from my place. And uh, I befriended one of uh, the staff member and he was like, yeah, you're cool and all. And he was like, uh, how long have you been here? And I'm like, I've only been here like two two weeks or something and he's like well that's cool and all and um you know i'm living in a in a elbeuf and it's it's not far but it's 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 like it's kind of far from here because i have to wake up my mom like early in the morning so she can take me to school and then to my job and it's kind of like exhausting for her and i was like man that's horrible that's a horrible story like uh what about you try to pass your driver's license? And he's like, yeah, but it, it's gonna take time and all. And I was like, man, that's, I'm sorry for you. And remember, I'm stupid and I'm naive. And he's like, what about um, we, we try uh, um, being roommates? And I was like, why not? Yeah, I mean, I have never had a roommate, but if I can help you and all, that's going to be good for you. I like to help people, you know. And he's like, yeah, all right, when do you want me to come? And I was like, just tell me a date and it will be like set up. Okay, and the next day, he's like, I'm ready. The fuck you mean you're ready? Like you ready, ready? Like you packed all your stuff in a in a half day and ready to come to my place. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, that's my first friend. Let's go. He comes. He gets set up in my in my apartment. He takes a room, and I was like, I don't know about this, but at least he pays half the the rent. And I was like, that's kind of cool, right? The first day was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. We live uh, in the in the same flat. We can like spend maybe an hour chatting, and then we go back to our lives. And I was like, that's yeah, that's cool. The thing is, my flat is is uh, configured in a, in a weird manner it's like the living room is is huge and there's this uh, um mezzanine i don't know how you say this in english mezzanine and uh there's another it's not a room but we made it a room the next day it was already horrible the guy was like he was making food and not cleaning afterwards that's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when he was coming back from work because we had different hours he was almost like drunk every time he was coming home drunk and if he was not drunk when he was coming home he was coming home with alcohol and he was getting drunk at the place he was in his room and i was like well that's in his room you know you can do whatever it's your room and one day just because i was looking for something i opened the room it, it was a, a mess like it was stinky it was a mess there was like alcohol stains all over the 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 thing it's not my flat you know and the landlord didn't know uh that i had a roommate at this time and i never told her if she sees this video i'm sorry he was like yeah but don't worry i'll clean it do, do your thing you know just clean it after a couple of weeks i was like you know maybe we we could set up some rules like when you come home you make as least noise as you can so i can rest or so i can like do my things it's like okay i pay the the electricity and the water and um the heat and you can pay like for the food once in a while and he was like since we eat not the same thing and we eat differently all the time maybe it's not wise that i pay for the food like myself and i was like i pay for the electricity the water and the heat that's Beaucoup. Yeah, t'as vu? I was like, okay. changement, euh, <laughs> la transi, eh, faudra être au taquet. <laughs> Ça va être un vrai yeah, you could speak in English, ouais. but you're an asshole. That's ouais. the only like sûr. he he knows he can speak in oh, English. Ouais. He just Mais doesn't non. want to. Mais non. Fuck you. Un vrai plaisir. <laughs> Stop talking. Um. <laughs> Anyways, after a month, he came to me with that sorry face. He said, uh, I have a sister and she's like dans la merde. She's just been kicked out of her uh, of her flat because uh, the landlord was an, an asshole. And I was like, man, I'm fucking like, I'm sorry. We can't let her out. Just tell her to come for maybe if, if, if it's like a month time for her to, to get back on her feet. She came like a week after I met her right outside in front of the elevator. And, and I said, hey, you're a uh, we're going to call her Emily. Hey, you're Emily. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, she's not nice, but she's not supposed to stay. I don't I don't care. You you're gonna stay for like a, a few weeks and when you find your flight, you just get out. I was not prepared for what's coming. It turns out she was not a sister, but it's it was not a problem for me because I was like, I'm helping someone. But I'm so naive and fucking stupid that I was like, that's no problem. You know, I'm helping people. <laughs> I'm helping two people that can find a, a place to live. Shame on me. It's it's a good thing I tried to help people, but I'm I'm a stupid cunt for trying to help these two. At the time, like my room is, is set up a, a bit differently. Like there's there's my bed and there's a, a wall I made out of a um, bed sheet. And now you can't see because the mezzanine is like here and the, the living room is here. So when you're in the living room, you can see whatever happens in the room. There's no intimacy. So I made this wall so uh, nobody can see what's happening. But she was sleeping on the couch right uh, uh, under and she could see whatever. I could not masturbate in peace because she was looking at me all the time when I was in my room. How creepy is that? How creepy is that? And the guy was like, he was becoming weirder and weirder. And I was like, when does this stop? So it's been like three months. And I was like, I'm fed up. I just can't. I just can't take them anymore. After three months, there were some weird things happening. She was uh, religious and she was always like, I can feel like there's spirits in your in your apartments, like bad spirits. They they want to, to hurt, to harm you. I was, I was naive again and <laughs> she was like you know we can't we can't just let this happen and i was like oh my god i can't i was so scared i was like bad spirits trying to to hurt to harm me to hurt me and i was like no i don't want to get hurt because of bad spirits she was such a liar she was such a liar there was nothing in this flat after like a, a couple of more weeks things started to go extremely weird like one day i was talking to her then i went to bed and this guy that we're going to name uh Carlos. Carlos is good. Um, Carlos, tu spawns. This is Carlos. Tu sais, calamar, non. Il s'appelle Squidward en anglais. Ah ouais? Squidward. Ok. So Carlos is coming back from work and he enters the, the flat and the first question he asks is Is Jad home? And Emily just looks at him and she's like, He's sleeping. And this motherfucker, what does he do? He started like going up the stairs and he stopped mid stairs and he started staring at me while I was sleeping and there was like there was something creepy I, 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 could, I could feel that I was oppressed <laughs> <laughs> no no Ça sera coupé au montage. <laughs> and I could feel that I was like oppressed that I was I was stared at I was uh, facing this way So I turned and I looked at him and he was just like staring but I could not see his face It was like a, a dark figure could not see anything except for his glasses He was looking at me and I was like y is there anything you want and he was staring for like four more seconds Then he turned around and he went back downstairs not saying a single word when i tell you i was creeped out it was i was like i was scared i didn't want to sleep anymore i stayed up all night i texted my mom and she was like tell them to go away i can't just tell them to leave like today i can't just go and say y'all to upset me i don't want to see you anymore just get the fuck out of my house because then they're gonna be like homeless and that's not cool so i started talking about it to emily and she was like we understand that there's something weird but don't worry we're gonna make it change okay if you make it change if there's no more weird stuff going on then then i'm okay with everything i could feel that there there was something off about all of it and here's the 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 worst part of it i was so cringed out i was so like stressed out and i felt so oppressed that i had to leave my own house for a whole week only to leave them there because i could not take it anymore but i was too shy to tell them to get the fuck out i was i was thinking about them instead of me and that's the worst thing to do the advice of today is do things for you first because you matter first you were born alone you will die alone do things for you only and after this week i came back and and still i couldn't sleep because i, I was like there's knives in, in in my house what if like one day i wake up with a knife on my chest no i don't want that a <laughs> couple of days after that i came to carlos and i said i want you to go out i'm sorry you have a week but you have to leave i, I just can't let you stay here because i'm not feeling okay with the fact that you're sleeping in my home and yeah there's one thing i forgot to mention he stayed four months and he paid two he was mad he was mad and and he left however there is still the sister emily sleeping in my sofa looking at me in my bedroom so as soon as, as uh, carlos was gone i cleaned everything up and i was like look popping clean it's like perfectly everything is perfect you sleep here it smells good and i expect you to pay the bill you've been staying here for three months she was only sleeping smoking cigarettes drinking coca and man that's she was smoking and drinking a few sips of coca and she would put the cigarette back into the coke 
the smell of this in the flat. First the cigarette, then the coke, and then the mix of the two, like... Even her breath, like everything was stinky about her. She looked nice, but she was extremely ugly to me because she behaved like a princess, you know. And she was always asking uh, stuff to, to her father. And she was always spitting on her mom, like, my mom, she's such a bitch. I love my daddy, though. He gives me everything I want. If your daddy can give you whatever you want, just ask him for a new flat or for whatever. Just leave. I don't want to see you again. So I told her, I, I can't. I want to stay alone in this flat. And she was like, okay, no problem. I'm going to leave uh, very soon, but uh, I'm going to miss you, you know. And she started manipulating me you know for me to tell her no you can stay at about a moment it just it just worked I was like no you know I, I don't want you to get hurt or I know you can't afford a big huge flat like you would like to so you can stay a couple of weeks more maybe until like January it was it was November non mais c'est pendant que tu le racontais tu vois <rire> genre vraiment une meuf qui reste pendant un moment paye pas son loyer j'ai fait hum, hum. j'ai entendu parler d'une dinguerie comme ça she manipulated me into thinking I was her friend. She was waking up like, uh, hello honey, would you like something to eat? Would you like something to drink? When she was actually a bitch, when she wanted me to tell her to stay, she was like the most lovely person you could ever meet. I was so naive that I was like, she's she's just getting used to me and she's, she's becoming my friend, you know? She stayed for eight months, she paid no rent. And this is not even the worst part. While she was staying and manipulating me, of course, she was like, I don't have enough money on my pay card. To, to buy this on, on uh, internet and I was like that's a shame I didn't want to give her my pain card and she was like yeah I can't afford it could you please like pay but I, I give it to you back in cash because I'm getting paid in cash she was trying to buy a pair of uh, Converse it was so expensive it was like 168 euros and she paid and I was like my money please and she was like don't worry I'll give it to you I swear I'll call my mom and she she's going to make you a bank virement you know, I was waiting a month and another. She, she would take my card and go to Monoprix. Monoprix is like a luxurious Walmart. Everything is expensive there. And for a whole month, she was just buying stuffs. Like she bought a pair of Uggs. Why do I feel like only superficial people wear these? It was um, 320 euros. I saw her wear it once. And you know, I added all the, the, the amounts she spent on my with my card and it went to a total of like 820 euros. When I told her that I wanted that money and the rent money, she was like, I have to go back to my friend's house who's got drinking addiction to prevent her from drinking again. Ça pue un peu. One day I was almost sleeping and I heard the door clench and I was like, maybe that's her. It was not her. She knew that I did not lock my doors because I was at the sixth floor. Like nobody goes there. If someone entered the room, came to pick her Louis Vuitton bag and her MacBook and she left. When she entered, I was looking at her. She looked at me. She took the things and she went out and not a single word. Can you imagine that there was someone I didn't know that came into my room, took something and went out? One day I was like, I need to talk to you right now. So I'm coming back from work and she had the keys. She comes uh, in the living room and she just lays there on the sofa smoking again when my flat was clean and, and smelling good with her coke and cigarette smell and fuck you. If you're looking this, fuck you. And she was like, um, yeah, I, I know you wanted to talk to me, but I need to talk to you too. She looks at me straight in the eyes and she says, I'm pregnant. This is the worst sentence you can use to say something to someone. We've never had sex in eight months that she stayed. I hugged her two times. And you can't get pregnant because you hug someone. Or maybe I don't know science. It's possible. <laughs> and when she says that to me, I'm like, maybe I masturbated in a towel and threw it away. And she used it to clean herself after her shower. And I was like, that's not possible because sperms, they die after like 15 seconds. What's going Why? Why is she saying this to me? And she's like, you know, I, I took my boyfriend at the other other night. We did our first time, but we did it without condom. You what? She looked at me and she was like, yeah, it was like the heat of the moment. We didn't have any condom. Then you stop. You don't do it. How are you 26 not knowing that you have to use a fucking condom not to have kids? I was confused and I was like, I knew she, she did this to confuse me and uh, do you want to keep it? She's like, yeah, I want to keep it. I was like, that's good for you then. But you remember what I said before when, when I came into the flat, what was she doing? She was smoking. Ah, oui. Ah, oui. Bah, oui. 
Super. <laughs> she was pregnant and smoking, so she left. After a couple of months, I was like, maybe she saved some money. So I asked her again and again and again. And this day, I sent her a message. Hey, how are you? I hope you're okay. How's uh, the features going? Is everything okay? I, I'm messaging you because I, again, need that money. I'm leaving for Burkina Faso in a couple of days. She was like, you're so selfish. You're always asking for money, not even trying to know uh, if I'm okay or not. Bitch, can't you, like, read? I was so... I'm still mad because it still affects me. When she said that, I just snapped. It was the first first time ever that I snapped on her and was like, you're fucking selfish. You're selfish because I gave you money. I, I took you in my home for eight months. You paid no rent and now you have to give me 800, uh, 800 euros and you just fucking can't because you're immature and, and, and you don't work and you want to be like uh, um, hosted to uh, it, like at everybody's place. You're, you're very immature and you're telling me that I'm selfish. You're not even thinking about me. No answer. 30 minutes later. I opened the door and she just started shouting at me. What the fuck was you saying in the message? Say it in my face. I snapped. She was shouting. I shouted at her. And as soon as I, I started like raising my voice, she started crying. Like I was oppressing her. She said, here, you have 300. I thought you were a good man. Turns out you're not. And she walks out. That's exactly what happened. Elle te doit de l'argent. Tu lui demandes, logique. Elle vient, elle t'embrouille, elle te dit que tu l'oppresses. <laughs> This is why I will never ever have roommates again in my life. After maybe a year, I messaged Emily. I asked for the money again. She said, okay, you're a, you're an asshole. I hate you, but I hope you're having a good day. She was mad, but she was still, still trying to manipulate me. The next month, this month, I'm sorry, I can't because there's like la chaudière. It exploded and there's water everywhere. The next month, same thing. So I waited eight months. <laughs> I was patient. I swear to you that I was patient. It lasted two years. And one day I was just mad and I was like, you know what? I want you to do whatever you want. I want that money tomorrow. You can ask your father like you, you know you can do. She didn't answer. However, her boyfriend, Roberto, he started calling me like several times. And he said, uh, who the fuck are you playing? And I'm like, bro, that's not a way to greet someone. He said, do you see the way you, you, you talk to my wife? I'm like, I'm sorry I talk this way to your wife, but your wife owes me 300 euros that she borrowed from me two years ago and I kept asking for it for several months and she never gave it back to me. He was like, yeah, don't play with me and everything. I was like, I've known you for two years. I don't want to play you. If I wanted you to know, you would have known. I didn't want to talk to you about it because I was like, she's a big girl. She knows what she's doing. She's going to pay me back. You don't need to know about it. Turns out she was not. So he started threatening me, threaten away. I'm not scared of you. He's like, first of all, I'm going to come back and take all of the stuff she left. So he started like getting mad at me and I was like, calm the fuck down. I'm not trying to start a fight. I'm trying to have my fucking money back. So I asked him to come with me in case he came with other people. He was like, you came with people to mess me up. I was like, I came with people in case you came with people. I'm not planning to start a fight. He was like, why didn't you like come every day to ask for your money? I was like, you're saying this but if I came every day to your place saying I want that money, how would you have reacted? He then like messaged me the night and he was like, so you came with people to mess me up? And I was like, are you fucking stupid? I told you I came with someone only in case you came with someone. We talked about it. Why are you acting stupid? They tried to make me appear like I'm the bad guy when she took money from me that she never gave to me back. So I was like, you know what? I don't have time to deal with you and your stupid ass girlfriend. I don't want all of this in my life, I'm gonna cut you off. This taught me one very, very important thing. Never give your money to somebody. $10, no. $20, no. Except for if you know the guy like, I know this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm mentally prepared to get hit at some point. <laughs> Just don't do it when I'm talking. <laughs> And this is how the story ends, but you can't trust nobody. Just put your hands back on your dick. Don't... Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> If he hits me, I just have to take it. I can fight, but I will lose. Right. Ah! No! No! Ah! <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this has been interesting. I know you like uh, my story times, so I hope you will like this one as well. Okay, so... Don't... Ah! <rire> voilà, ça c'était gratuit. <rire> La petite vengeance. J'avais dit que je te niquerais quand tu t'y attendrais pas. Voilà. Couché. Non, fuck you.
I didn't need to Fuck you Je t'ai même pas tapé Espèce d'enculé Arrête Arrête hey Non Non Vilain chien Non Arrête Tiens te pense qu'elle tape Mais mais je vais voilà je vais Arrête c'est bon C'est bon c'est fini là On s'est tout rendu mais Non On s'est tout rendu Non bon, je t'en dois encore Non Mais bien sûr Non c'est fini Casse-toi <rire> Je te l'ai éteint la caméra <rire> Non je suis con